You're welcome to the third lesson in this series, which is on introduction to mammography. I remain Anik and Jacob, and I will guide you through this in a moment. Why do you have to worry about mammography when we have been dealing with ultrasound and breast ultrasound? The answer is simple. Most people coming for breast ultrasound secondarily are people who may have had mammograms. Maybe some findings were made on the mammograms and the physician wants a confirmation using ultrasound. So they send the patient to you. If you are completely ignorant of basic findings in mammography, you might not be able to correlate your ultrasound findings to the findings made on the mammogram. So this correlation of findings is very important, both in terms of location, in terms of types of lesions, sizes of lesions, if there is a suspected lesion in a mammogram on the right breast at 3 o'clock, you are expected to see about the same thing on the sonogram. And maybe you can find more or less, but that's the essence of this lesson. So you need to go back a bit and learn about mammography and know how to relate it with breast ultrasound. Mammography is the radiographic examination of the breast to detect breast pathology and cancer. Uh, we know that breast, breast cancer accounts for the highest number of cancer in Nigeria among women. Approximately 30 out of every 100,000 women die of breast cancer annually. Well, this is a bit of a background and we may have read this in literature here and there. Uh, most breast cancer screening programs depend on x-ray mammography. It is low cost and also has low radiation dose. The, sensi the sensitivity for early detection and improved treatment is well established with mammography. Recognition of breast cancer depends on the detection of masses, particularly with irregular or speculated margins. Clusters of micro calcifications and architectural distortions of breast structures. These are examples before we continue. You can see example of findings on mammograms. First one is that of a speculated mass. The margins are sharp and irregular. You have the second one, clustered heterogeneous micro calcifications. And then you have architectural distortion on the third image. The American Medical Association and the American Cancer Society, the American College of Radiologists, recommended a baseline mammogram should be taken by age 40. And biannual examinations between ages 40 and 50, and a yearly examinations after the age of 50. The National Cancer Institute recommends women in their 40s, 50s, and older to be screened every one to two years using mammography. The views that are required are the craniocaudal and the mediolateral oblique views of each breast. Now, diagnostic mammography is used to evaluate breast abnormalities. Uh, additional views may be required. 
like magnification or spot compression views. It can also be used to guide stereotactic biopsy of the breast. Like we already mentioned, ultrasound imaging are alternatives to mammography. Magnetic resonance imaging is also a very good one. Now, in modern day mammography, breast, um, uh, let's look at the modern day mammography. Of course, we know that the breast is composed of fatty tissue glandular tissue and connective tissue. Normal and cancerous tissues in the breast have small x-ray attenuation differences between them. So mammography uses an x-ray equipment specifically designed to optimize for breast cancer detection. Uh, detection of minute calcifications are important when it comes to mammo. Of course, and mammo is very good at that. There is high correlation of calcification patterns with the disease. And the best differential between the tissues is obtained at low X-ray energies. And mammography equipment yield low contrast sensitivity, high resolution, and low dose radiation. A diagrammatic representation of a typical mammography equipment, it's a dedicated mammography equipment uses specialized x-ray tubes and is optimized uh, screen film detector system there are breast compression devices used this is the image of a mammography equipment showing the platform where the breast is positioned the compressor the yeah the compression panel and then the x-ray tube collimator in designing the x-ray tube there is a cathode and the filament circuit the operating voltage is low between 35 to 40 kvp of course with regular x-ray equipment you can have up to 125 or more in kilo peak but with mammo maximum is about 40 kvp and you don't even use up to that when you are exposing the breast typically 23 to 24 kvp There is a dual filament placed in a focusing cup and you have magnification of about 0.3 or 0.1 millimeter. The focal spot can be small um, which minimizes geometric blurring and maintains partial resolution. The typical tube current is around 100 MA plus or minus 25 MA. For large, that is the 0.3 millimeter focal spot, and 25 MA plus or minus 10 MA for the small focal spot. The anode is rotating, uses molybdenum and dual track, which could be molybdenum and rhodium targets. Cryocytic X ray production is a major reason for choosing these metals. Um, targets are used in combination with specific tube filters to achieve optimal energy. A source to image distance of about 60 to 66 cm is to, typically used. The tube is tilted by about 25 degrees to minimize. The effective focal spot. This is what we're talking about. Normally, the MAMO, the anode side of the MAMO equipment is uh, placed such that 
the radiation that is reaching the nipple comes from that side because of the anode heel effect. More energy comes out of the cathode end than from the anode end. And so the cathode end supplies the energy that reaches the base of the breast, the chest wall, while the anode side with less energy supplies the energy that reaches the nipple. And this is a good compensation, um, compensatory mechanism. That's what I have just explained. The, there is collimation of beam, just like any radiographic procedure employing ionizing radiation, which is harmful on exposure to living cells, it's important that collimation is adequate. The field size matches the film casted size. So you don't have to expose beyond that. The light bulb filament, the mirror and the collimator define the X-ray field. That we already know. Another mechanism of protecting from radiation is the issue of compression. Apart from immobilizing the breast, it also thins out the breast in such a way that it makes it firm and uh, that prevents scatter too much scatter from reaching the breast because the tissue is made more compact and there is less motion compression is achieved with the low attenuating legs and paddle which is attached to a compression device it is 10 to 20 newtons of force typically applied. If, um, a flat 90 degree paddle provides a uniform density image. Sport compression uses small paddles and the principal drawback of compression is patient discomfort. Yeah, sometimes the patient will complain about pain. So when you are compressing, you have to listen or ask the patient once she starts feeling pain, she should let you know so you can end the compression right there. Uh, of course, compression can be full when you are trying to compress the whole breast or it can be spot when you are trying to compress only a particular area of the breast where there is a suspicious, uh, where the suspicion lies. There is also magnification, which can be employed in mammography. You're trying to get a certain portion of the breast enlarged. So the radiologist will be able to see more of a particular place, maybe than the rest of the breast. Once there is a palpable mass or a nodule or calcification that was seen on ultrasound or on other modalities and you want to confirm it on a mammal, you can palpate the area involved and apply a 1.5 or 2 times magnification so that the image will be larger and clearer. There are some disadvantages to magnification, geometric blurring, high dose of radiation and long exposure time. You have to watch out for those. Risk and benefits. When you consider the dose, um, based on annual dose of 3 milligram, the increased breast cancer risk from radiation is 6 per million examined women. This is equivalent to dying in an accident 
when traveling 5,000 miles by airplane or 450 miles by car. And that risk is very insignificant. Screening in 1 million women is expected to identify 3,000 cases of breast cancer. That is worth doing if you understand what we mean. Now, screening will reduce the mortality rate by about 40%. So, the benefits of getting a mammogram far outweigh the risk associated with the radiation due to the mammogram. Now, there are several densities that um, we can identify on a mammogram. We already learned about this in the previ previous lesson. You can have almost entirely fat, which is less than 25% glandular. We have scattered fibroglandular densities. That's 25 to 50% glandular. We have heterogeneously dense, approximately 51 to 75 percent glandular and then we have the extremely dense breast which is more than 75 percent glandular the images are here again I have the type 1 2 3 and 4 next thing we want to look at is the views that um, if you are doing a mammogram as a radiographer the basic views that you have to produce. Routine screening mammogram is done in two views. This is the craniocaudal and the mediolateral oblique views. When you're doing it for a diagnostic purpose, we can now add a lateral view. These images represent first on the left the craniocaudal craniocaudal view, as the name implies, from going from head towards the toe. That's the direction of the X-ray beam. The second one, the image on the right, mediolateral oblique, also describe the direct describe the direction of the X-ray beam from medial to lateral. When the images have been taken for the right and the left breast, these represent the mammographic images that you can have when you have taken these positions. So in details, we can look at the positioning and the projections for each of these. There is the craniocaudal projection, whether it's for the left or for the right breast, the positioning is the same. Um, the nipple has to be in profile, smooth out wrinkles and folds, and then apply compression. Of course, apply, put your markers to identify the side of the breast. And this is the kind of image that you would have. One, let's say the image on the left for the left breast and the image on the right for the right breast, craniocaudal. Mediolateral, the tube has to be angled to about 45 degrees. And then the beam exposes the medial part of the breast and projects the image to the cassette and you would see the left mediolateral image of the breast to the right and the right to the left. How do you localize masses and maybe correlate what you see on mammogram to what you see on the sonogram? It takes us back to the clock face view where you can see the uh, for the right the craniocaudal images you have the right craniocaudal and the left craniocaudal 
and uh, you would see the relationship between them where you have nine o'clock on the right cranial cuddle corresponds to three o'clock on the left cranial cuddle. 12 and 6 o'clock are at the same locations where you have 3 o'clock on the right cranial cuddle corresponds to 9 o'clock on the left cranial cuddle image. Now the mediolateral obliques, right or left, you can see that 11 o'clock on the right 11 o'clock on the left corresponds to 1 o'clock on the right. 7 o'clock corresponds to 5 o'clock. That's for mediolateral oblique images. We already talked about the quadrants. We have the right upper outer, right upper inner, right lower outer and right lower inner quadrants we have the left upper inner left upper outer left lower inner and left lower outer quadrants lesions can fall in any of these and when they do you are expected to mention which quadrant you found a suspicious lesion the clock face same thing 12, 6, 9, 3 o'clock, I mean from 1 to 12 o'clock, you can actually identify a lesion as falling on any of this time on the face of the clock. Now, there are certain diagnostic density levels that you can find on mammograms. can be high that's higher than surrounding tissues it can be equal that's same as the breast tissues and it can be low dense that is lower than the rest of the breast tissues in using a mammogram you can actually see this correlation you can see on the mammogram the low density image has a density that is lower than the general density of the mammogram. The middle one is the same, while the third one appears brighter. When it comes to shapes of masses, it can be oval, it can be round, it can be irregular. They are all represented. Now, going further, when it comes to margins of the shapes that we have mentioned, when it comes to their margins, can be circumscribed, obscured, microlobulated, indistinct, or speculated. These different margins might suggest different kinds of lesions or malignancies. You have to be able to correlate, for instance, a speculated margin on mammogram to a speculated margin on sonogram or maybe a microlobulated lesion on a sonogram to a microlobulated lesion on a mammogram now there are several ways that classifications appear on a mammogram you look at the way they appear, their morphology can be amorphous, benign, or amorphous, ductal carcinoma in C2, uh, fine, pleomorphic, could be cross, fine linear, or fine linear with branching. These are all forms of micro classifications. Remember, mostly micro classifications are seen on mammograms. What you see mostly on sonograms might be macro classification. The very tiny classifications may not be apparent. And the truth is, 
the tiny calcifications are associated a lot with malignancies. Now we can see some examples of breast malignancies on mammograms. Remember the invasive ductal carcinoma which we saw on ultrasound. So we put them side by side. You can see how it would appear on a mammogram and how it appears on a sonogram. That's the essence of correlation. You can see the invasive lobular carcinoma. We already saw this image when we did the sonogram lecture. So you can see the way it would appear on your mammogram. This is the intracystic papillary carcinoma and you can see the way it appears on the mammogram. Another example of the intracystic papillary carcinoma. Another example. Mammography is the gold standard modality for breast screening and initial diagnosis in women from 40 years and above. Younger women who tend to have dense breasts may be referred for ultrasound instead. And most breast lesions seen on mammography may still be referred for ultrasound in order to establish accurate lesion localization and sometimes perform ultrasound guided breast procedures. That is um, ultrasound biopsy. So what we what the summary is where ultrasound is used as the modality for initial evaluation. Mammography should be considered if ultrasound is negative. This is so especially in cases of unusual breast symptoms. Ultrasound is not sensitive in identifying very small lesions and micro calcifications. But mammography can identify lesions as small as 2 millimeters. Of course, that makes it the gold standard in this case. I hope you enjoyed the lecture and um, you have learned something about mammography and how useful it is for you when you want to be a breast sonographer. Mammography is essential because they help each other and they help you to help the patient. Thank you for your time and good luck with your post-test. See you in the next lecture.